Thanks for coming to the Talent Neuron demo session. My name's Emily. I'm going to walk us through um, the first part of our demo today. We really appreciate you taking the time to come in and join us. So where we're starting today, if you didn't see Ellen's session, definitely recommend um, coming by and going through that, really talking about skills and job architecture. And to build off that, we wanted to support our demo starting on the landing page. So when you look at the landing page, I'm sure there's a few modules here that are sticking out to us as exciting, but the landing page is designed to support our users by use case. So when we think about this, it's really designed by organization and user. So where we're going to start actually is going to be in the talent snapshots. So what we are able to do within Talent Neuron, just to set the stage here, is we're customizing and looking at data for the past two years for our specific locations, our talent profiles that are defined by us, so we can go as broad or narrow as we'd like, whether we wanna look at all talent, the purpose of today, looking at skills, so we're looking at natural language processing, and then we can look at our employer set, whether that be all employers in the market, our specific competitor set, or just by industry. So when we isolate natural language processing in the overall market for the competitors that we've analyzed, we see such a spike in demand over the past two years, and we can break this down by month. And what the obvious, probably natural question of natural language processing is, is who is driving this demand, right? So when we talk about demand, we're talking about all job postings in the market that we have defined within our set locations and our competitor set. So when we want to understand who's actually driving this huge spike starting in June, 2023, what we'll do is we'll go over to our competition module, which I just skipped over to, and we're in the same search criteria. And what we can see based on the competitors that we've chosen to analyze specifically is that our three, employer sets of S&P 100, top tech influencers, and then we isolated Microsoft, have all grown by over triple digits within the last two years. So this data will also tell us who the top competitor is, which we have defined as the S&P 100. And then we can also see who the fastest growing is with the DHI group, and then the newest in the market. We can see the number of postings that they have in our selected locations, the percent growth, and then how this is trending by the year, by the time frame that we've chosen. You can do this as well on that same timeline grid, looking at over month over month, by quarter or by year, and we can see that consistent growth throughout the modules. The next question that probably is going to become pretty obvious is now that we know who is driving this demand, we want to understand where are they driving this demand? Where is the competition um, concentration more or less dense, right? So that way we can understand how we can start to source or house this talent for our organization. So as we move into location module, I'm actually gonna hand it over to my colleague, Matt. Thank you. All right. So just going back to the different modules that, Ellen, or, uh, that Emily had talked about, I like to start out, do we build, do we buy, do we borrow, right? Um, if we're gonna buy the talent, let's really you know, deconstruct, understand, can we buy the talent? Who do we need to compete with to buy the talent? How are we gonna buy the talent? And you know, some of these skill sets these days, everybody's competing. Maybe we need to shift gears and we need to build the talent. We've been hearing a lot of the build, especially over the last 18 months. But if we're, you know, as we, we, we dissect the data, if the data is really telling us, hey, within our core markets, within some new markets that we're considering growing in, maybe we've got a remote first strategy, we can hire anywhere, where do we go, right? So I want to go to the location analysis module. Let me just bring it up real quick. And oops, sorry about this. I'm, without a mouse, I'm, uh, I'm not very good. But as we think about the locations that we built, these might be the core locations that we're, we're in right now, the locations that we're focused on and hiring, and we're still sticking with that talent profile, national, uh, natural language processing. What the data is telling us is, you know, let's build a scorecard. Let's really understand all the dynamics of, okay, not only is there supply in this market, right? Are there skills, people with these skill sets? 
what's the demand? You know, maybe what we're trying to find or the data is telling us is supply demand ratio is really high, not favorable, really low. It's a good market. Maybe we're going to pay a lot more in some markets than the other. We can sit now, we can sit there and we can tell the story to our leadership team, right? We could say, you know, look, we've been placing all of our bets in Singapore, but maybe we need to start having some internal conversations and shifting investments. You know, where do we make those investments in some, some markets Maybe the business is saying, you know what, we're actually open to going anywhere in the world. Where in the world should we go? And so we're, you know, this data set, we just a little background on Talent Neuron. For the last 20 years, we have been delivering global external validated talent intelligence uh, around the world, right? So within the platform, we cover data within 92% of the world's largest GDP producing nations, which is about 42 countries. Um, you know, some of these other countries we deliver through custom research, but we like to, you know, how do we tell a story? We put it, somebody told us uh, a couple of years ago, had a corporate strategy for a large biopharma tech company sits over in the UK. He said, you know, look, when it came to location strategy conversations with our CFO, with our head of real estate, head of HR in the room, it used to be what we call pub talk, right? We're at a pub. Everybody's telling a story. Now we can put it on a monitor and we can actually look at data and we can tell a story why we shouldn't be making investments in this market, but we should consider making investments in some other core markets. So location analysis really allows us to dissect that and really understand, okay, are we making the investments in the right markets? If not, where else should we go? Then there's skills. You know, everybody's talking about skills. And, you know, if you saw uh, the presentation that uh, our head of strategic consulting gave this morning, Ellen Thomason, um, you know, we're, we're dissecting skills through the lens of benchmarking to give you an idea. We, uh, you know, we have about five and a half billion historical job postings. We pick up job postings every day. We normalize it. We dedupe it, but we're, we're matching to about 40,000 skills and certifications. Um, as I go into our skills module, and I know that this might look familiar if you were in Ellen's presentation this morning, it's, you know, let's really, uh, you know, let's do what we call an evolution analysis of a job role or a skill. Um, Let's have a conversation to say, you know, look, let's start peering around the corner, having conversations with our leaders to say, you know, these are some of the new and emerging skills that we're starting to see appear in the marketplace. What do we do? Let's go to talent acquisition. Let's start building talent pipelines to be proactive versus reactive. And, you know, maybe as we look at the data, we're determining these are really hard skills to go out and try to hire for. But as we see them start to move from emerging to growing skills, we need to start getting serious about this. You know, again, do we buy the skills or do we build the skills? You know, maybe we don't make as much investments as we have in the past to some of these declining skills. What are the core skills? So we're always looking, we have machine learning AI algorithms that are always looking for skills. And we're measuring when we first start seeing these skills to obviously, you know, over a four year rate, some of the skills are starting to decline. So this allows us again to, to be prepared. Uh, as we think about skill adjacencies here, and I know I've got just a couple minutes, so uh, my apologies if I'm going a little bit fast. It, sometimes it takes a couple minutes to load. And let me see if, there we go. I'll just go over here. It's already preloaded. I'm still using that national uh, natural language processing to see what are the relationship between skills, right? If I want to really have a conversation with talent management, L&D, the head of HR, we know, you know, our CIO is saying, you know, look, the North Star skill is uh, NLP. And what we need to determine is, you know, it's a very scarce skill set. We know that. We know it's in high demand by many different employers. Let's look at the relationship between these skills. Do we have skills in house that we should be focused on reskilling and upskilling? Maybe it's a career mobility conversation, right? Maybe it's a conversation to say, you know, the North star skill is uh, NLP. As we go out and try to hire candidates and bring them in, maybe we, you know, everybody again is looking to hire that North star skill of NLP. Maybe we look at some of these other skills that we can hire for or reskill upskill, bring them in house and obviously make them um, go through some training L&D, uh, you know, obviously uh, upskilling to NLP to make sure that, you know, we're going to have this talent in place, this skill set in place 
you know, at a very reasonable rate. So in wrapping this up, because I know we just have a couple more minutes. We look at the build, the buy, the borrow. It's storytelling data. You know, we've been gathering data for over 20 years, uh, normalizing it, validating it, and allowing our customers to build a full-scale talent strategy based on data. <laughs>